Japan safe, be powerful and useful? That's the question that hit the guys who were trying to work on Rust as a programming language. Can they make a language that is safe, but is still able to do all of the things that we really need to be able to do in a low level programming language? And the answer with Rust is very clearly yes. Operating systems have been written in Rust. The Some core components of Firefox have been written in Rust. When I first saw Rust, I thought, well, clearly it can't do anything. All it's got is this lockdown stuff, so you can't make stuff happen. But people have made stuff happen. And, and now that I use Rust regularly, I find that the safety actually gives me the confidence I need to do riskier things without worrying that I'm going to completely crash my computer and destroy everything. Rust has some very impressive techniques for making sure the code you write will not have any data races, will not have any seg faults, or use after freeze with actual direct access to memory. Things that are really hard to guarantee in any other language, particularly one that doesn't even have a garbage collector. And yet Rust does that. And if you're curious to see how you can use that to make your programming more effective and learn the things that Rust wants to teach you, then here is a great place to start. This course is Rust in seven days and I've divided the course up into seven different topics. One is just getting Rust working, get something going. Day two, we'll introduce the trait system, which is Rust's really powerful mechanism for interfacing between different types and enabling lots of code reuse. Day three, we're going to be looking at lifetimes and how they work and how they can provide safety guarantees to your code. They're just something that once you start using them, you'll wish you'd had them all your life. I really, really appreciate the lifetime system. And then... In day four, we'll just look at accessing the standard environment around the program as it's running. Day five, we'll introduce threads and concurrency patterns and show how even this can be completely safe because of Rust mechanisms, but still able to do a great many things. Over day six and day seven, we'll be building a, a small banking application. The first part, day six, looking at databases and the second part, making that face the web so that people can access it through their browser. All of this done in Rust with a small snippet of HTML. My name is Matthew Studley. I'm a software developer, storyteller, and games enthusiast. And you can find out more about what I do at storyfeed.com. A quick note about Rust editions. During the time I was filming this course, there was a major edition release. That edition is called 2018. While this introduces a lot of new features that you don't have to use and won't need to know about to run this course, there is one change that is significant enough and you will need to understand. So, so I'm going to create a new Rust project here, Cargo New, and I'll call this 18. Now, if we go into 18, you'll see there is a cargo.toml file. And if I open up this file, you'll see it has edition 2018 here. If you see this here, you are using Rust 2018. If you don't, you probably aren't. If you are having trouble getting your code to run, and it's the same as mine, that may be because my code is only 2015 only. In this case, you can just delete this line of code and it will run it as 2015 and everything will be fine. Though you'll probably find it easier just to do what the compiler says and run the fixes that it suggests anyway. If I open up the source code, and we want to use something from another library. In Rust 2015, I would need to include this, this phrase, extern, crate, and then maybe the name of the crate. In this case, I'll go for brand. And then to use that code, I would need to somewhere here put use rand, and here I can put rand like so. In Rust 2018, you no longer need to include this or this if you're going to reference rand directly, though you can put use rand random like so and 
which is also perfectly good in 2015. If you want to access a module in your own library, you will need to write mod and then mod name, like so. But to use it in Rust 2015, that would have been use mod name. But in 2018, that is create mod name. Don't worry too much about it. The compiler will tell you anyway. So just do what it says. So let's get started. I'll see you in the first lesson.